You do buzz it. Go in there. Go downs is back with 10 of the most slept on draft picks. So picks that are going to pan out much better than I think people realize here. Starting with the Kansas City Chiefs and Kamal Hayden, the cornerback from Tennessee. Two seasons ago, don't watch that tape. Brutal for him. Last year was incredible. I thought he did a really good job attacking underneath. Reading the quarterback's eyes, he's got a lot of upside, some good athletic ability. I, I pegged him for a cover two guy, which the Chiefs run a bit of. Cover two and man covered, so I think it's a really good fit. Chiefs are really good at find not just finding defensive backs, finding them later in the draft, finding really good fits, and then having those guys play and make an impact early on. And they needed a corner to step up for them. Watch out for Hayden playing right away. You know, early this year, just this year in general. Um, so that's going to end up being a better pick and more useful of a pick than how people are talking just because he was around six guys. So definitely one I really like. Um, next, DJ James, another corner from Auburn. Going to the Seattle Seahawks, they end up drafting both corners. I like DJ James a bit better, but uh, Pritchett was more of a true outside guy. James is like, you know, do you play him outside or do you play him inside? So a little bit of a tweener, and those types of guys don't get as much value. But he was really solid outside, really good underneath, really good athletic uh, athletic ability, really good at, uh, attacking downhill, high motor type guy. Maybe a very poor man's Devin Witherspoon. Um who plays in the slot and plays outside. And I think James, I think he has more upside in the slot, but I think he's going to be used a bit. And it's perfect because Witherspoon, again, he actually had more snaps in the slot than he had outside, but pretty close. So when he's in, in when he's in the inside, you can use a guy like James to experience on the outside. When Witherspoon's on the outside, you can use a guy with a high, high upside on the inside like DJ James. So I think it's a really solid corner. And that it was a really... I thought it was a steal of a pick as well. Really good value. I think you make an impact right away. But just how the Seahawks defense will be run and how they can use him, I think he's being much more of an impact and much more of a valuable pick uh, than people are kind of giving credit for it. Um, next, we got a center. We're not done talking about centers in this video. Let me tell you that. Dylan McMahon from NC State to the Eagles in round six. This is a sneaky, sneaky, classic, sneaky Eagles pick. They might need a center of the future. They might need one for right now, <clears throat> but they may have found a gem. And it's a guy that might need a little bit more developing, but this guy has the traits, especially the athletic traits that you look for, for offensive alignment, but specifically interior offensive alignment. And these types of guys really pan out. Now we're talking about the Eagles, who know offensive linemen, who develop offensive linemen, and coach the offensive linemen as good as anyone. And now you're trying to replace uh, Jason Kelsey, who had those athletic traits on the inside. And was he supposed to be as good as he is right now? You know, so I could see McMahon, maybe, maybe it's not right away, maybe it is right away, but I can see him panning out really well for a long time as a Philadelphia Eagles at the center position. So that is one to watch. Maybe it's not, again, maybe it's not right away, but they know what they're doing. They know the value of the center position. Think about, we're going to talk about this more, but think about the best centers in the NFL right now over the years where they got drafted. You know, Frank Ragnow might be the exception, you know, the minus him because he, I think he's the best in football right now and he was a first round pick, but <clears throat> Teams know the value of the position and what where you can find kind of hidden gems. The Eagles know as good as anyone. So watch out for that guy in his career with Philadelphia. Next, Tyrone Tracy Jr., running back from Purdue, actually former receiver with Iowa, turned running back and looked like a natural in his first year starting at the position. Um, you know, can run routes, obviously, because and catch the ball because he used to play receiver, but he ran the ball very, very well. He was actually my running back seven, which was probably higher than pretty much everybody. Um, the Giants need – so you get a good value. You get a good running back, a lot of upside in round five, but the Giants needed a running back. They needed a running back to get reps and be a factor and possibly be the future starter. And, and Brian Day Dayball really, at the end of the day, wants to pass the ball. That, that's where he wants to be, This where he wants his team to be, pass first, even though it hasn't really been able to be that. But that that's where he's at. So he wants to throw the ball and have a running back that can catch the ball, former receiver that you can even line up at receiver if you want to. I think that's big. And I, people like this pick, but I, this is a guy that's going to be bigger than people realize. Bigger for the New York Giants. Used a lot more than you think. This is a fantasy sleeper as well. So round round five, love this pick. 
Love the upside. He's supposed to be an upside guy, but now I'm thinking he's a right now guy. So um, definitely one to get excited about for this year. We're going back to center, and we're not done after this. Center is perfect position for this video. Like, no one's really talking about these guys. People knew this was a pretty good value pick for the Buffalo Bills, getting the Georgia center, Cedric, Cedric Van Pran, uh, who was very solid, very efficient, very consistent, very good for the Georgia Bulldogs and that <clears throat> stout team, stout offensive line. But So you get a good player that you could probably plug and play, but the Bills had to move on from some guys, including Mitch Morris, Ryan Bates. I mean, it's not a massive loss for Bates, but they needed some guys for the future, but right now, I think this is a safe safe pick. I think he can plug and play, and it's maybe not just at center, at guard as well. I would not be surprised if he is starting in one of those spots week one. And if he's not, I think he could be a starter for them at some point this year or for a long time. Team, Good teams like this know where you have to value center. They know that you can find gems and you can find long-time starters around this range that just fall on your lap. So here is one that, again, people know it's – Pretty good value pick. He probably should have went a little earlier, but he is going to be more of an impact than people are talking right now. So this is your second center. We're going to talk about another one too. Next, the Bucks getting Bucky Irvin. Irving, running back from Oregon. Uh, this is my number six running back. Love watching Bucky at Oregon. Um, you know, a little on the smaller side, but you wouldn't really know it by the by the way he runs. Physical. Lower his shoulder, he'll run somebody over, bounces off you. The contact bounce is ridiculous. He is really quick, more quick than fast, but he is super quick, super twitched up. First guy's not bringing him down. Um, can catch the ball as well. And the and people know this is maybe you know he's sneaky good. He's solid. This could be a good pick, but I think people go. Oh, Rashad White broke out big time last year. He got the full load for the Bucks. Like really, no one else played. Like you look at running back share on team's roster, on the team's depth chart last year. Rashad White got the biggest share, like, you know, uh, out of any running back group group there. But do the Bucks really want it to be that way? Not really. Nobody does. They didn't really have the next guy they fully trusted. Now they do. The perfect guy to compliment Rashad White. They are going to use him. He's going to be a factor. I like his work around the red zone, too. I know White scored a lot of touchdowns around there, but he's going to be sneaky good for the Bucks right away. Right away. As good as Rashad White was, I don't know if there's that much of a difference between the two. Rashad White's going to be better. but uh, So that that's uh, more of an impact than you think. And another center. We had three centers on this list. No one wants to talk about the centers. But these guys are going to be good. They're going to have long careers. Um, I think Bordellini and McMahon are kind of in the same category where they have the upside. They have the athletic traits, the foot quickness that you look for for Offense linemen, interior offense linemen, specifically centers, they seem to work out pretty well. Cedric Van Pran, maybe not as quick as those guys, but he had that really good play from a really good offensive line. But Bordellini uh, has played, can play any position on the offensive line pretty much. I like him at center or guard at the next level. For day one starter, his best bet would probably be a guard. The Colts could use somebody there. But I prefer him to kind of sit and be that center behind Ryan Kelly uh, we might not see him play much at all this year, honestly, and that's perfectly fine. But Ryan Kelly's on an expiring deal. I don't think they're going to extend him. The Colts know center. Uh, Shane Steichen, we talked about the Eagles, talked about Jason Kelsey, came from Philadelphia. He's a really good coach. He can develop offensive linemen. Uh, the scheme really fit, uh, works well for offensive linemen, but the Colts in general have typically been pretty good with old linemen. So, Watch out for this guy to be not maybe not this year. Again, he has a shot at, at guard or filling in for somebody. But next year, 2025, Bordellini being that starting center uh, at a bargain price there for the Colts. And he has that upside. It's a guy you want to work with and um, you know, could could be a, you know, you can't really say anyone's gonna be a future Jason Kelsey, but uh, you know, again, how quick he is, the upside that he has. And we talk about that Eagles connection with Shane Steichen. So that's a guy to watch out for in his future, his long career with the Indianapolis Colts. Next, uh, Maris Leofow from Notre Dame, uh, linebacker going to the Dallas Cowboys. This is a guy, like, early in the process was kind of higher up on the linebacker board because you know how flashy he is. He's crazy lengthy. But then as the process went on, everyone was dropping it down because you do see the negatives. Like, the highs on his tape – are so high. The lows are pretty low. It's like a boomer bust guy in round three. So people started moving him down. I moved him back up actually the last week of the draft. I kind of go back and like, 
All right, the guys with like the crazy potential, the create like the the big play ability that you just cannot coach. You want those guys. You don't want to focus on the negatives too much. That's what a lengthy process does. So I started moving them up, and I think I was right to do so because the Cowboys took them in the third round. And to some people, it's people are probably like, "Man, I don't know if he was supposed to go that high. Was he being talked about going that high?" So people are kind of talking about that, but. Man, I love his upside. It's a kid that you want to work with, the length, the flashiness, the explosiveness, the high motor you want to work with. And he goes to the Cowboys. He goes to Mike Zimmer, who's really good at developing and coaching linebackers. This just feels like a Mike Zimmer linebacker right right here. So I like his chances to start, and I love his upside in that Cowboys defense. So I think this is actually going to be a sneaky, sneaky good pick that probably needs to be talked about a, a bit more. Another one, Braylon Trice, which people know Braylon Trice was good for Washington. They know it's a pretty good pick for the Falcons, but, man, I think we need to talk about this one a bit more. This guy is going to continue where he left off. He's going to be super productive. He's going to continue to be productive. Maybe he isn't the flashiest guy, like, athletic, athletically, but he's definitely athletic. He's athletic enough. Uh, maybe he isn't the flashiest guy in terms of power, but powerful enough. Um, he's in, it's just a Raheem Morris. Like, it's like a Rams-type edge rusher that they bring in. It's like... Okay, that guy ended up being better than we thought, more productive than we thought. He's going to play for the Falcons, and he's going to be productive. Um, he's a guy you can just put in there right away, and, and be, he's be productive. He'll be productive. So uh, watch out for him to be may, maybe their best edge rusher in Atlanta, which might be, you know, how could you say that? A rookie third-round guy that maybe doesn't have the perfect traits. Like, I don't really care. Like, I think he could be really, really solid. So maybe talk about him a little bit more. And maybe the poster child – of this video is Devondre Sweat, um, you know, big time player. Everyone knows the big time player, but going in the second round to the Tennessee Titans, people are ripping this pick. Uh, and I understand the off the field issue, not smart. Uh, could that pop up more and more? You know, DUI is like more the thing. It's kind of like a reality check type thing. Is it a thing that's gonna like? You know, we'll see. I, I can't. I'm not the off the field expert, but I'm not as worried as some other people. But if he ends up doing more of that, it's gonna, we're gonna look back and go. Okay, I guess that was stupid. You know, I just don't really see it like that, but we'll see. Uh, but also, there's people that just don't like Sweat because he's too heavy. You know, he's too heavy. He's not going to play 100% snaps. Nobody really does. Um, you know, he's not going to play 90. It's okay. Uh, these D linemen these days, they're rotating a lot. He's going to play a bit, but um, I think people are kind of overlooking, overthinking uh, him for multiple reasons. I loved his tape. I had a round one grade on him, him making that stupid decision, decision make, maybe bump him down a little bit, but love this pick. Uh, people just view him as like a heavy nose tackle. Actually, Texas played him in the B gap more than the A gap. I think he needs to play in the A gap more, but he was good. He was good out there at D tackle. He actually has some moves, some pass rush moves, and he's quick laterally for his size. It's just it's such a unique, unique player that you have to double you absolutely have to double. Like he's just he swallows blockers. Like he he's just too big of a body and too good for his size. Like he's another Jordan Davis type player. Why Jordan Davis is better and why he went a lot higher is because he's way more athletic. But I think Sweat's pretty athletic for his size. He's a factor he creates for his teammates. How are you gonna block him and Jeffrey Simmons? It's gonna be impossible to double both of them. Yeah, the two guys you have to double. It's it's gonna be crazy. So he might not People still might overlook him because he's not going to have crazy stats. Like, he won't have crazy stats. He's going to create for his teammates. He's going to be a disruptor. He's going to be an impact. Um, he's going to make that D-line better, and they already have an elite player there. So that is – I can't believe people are sleeping on it. I can believe it for, like, the off-the-field issues. There's some people talking about it, like, worried about him because his his weight and can he play – 70% plus snaps, which you could, cause you kind of need him to, if you pick him in the second round, I think, I think you definitely could. I think you get some good play. Even if he's, if he's playing just 60% plus at first, um, it's a really good player that is unique and has more to his game than people give him credit for. So I actually love that pick while people are ripping it. Now, if he doesn't work out, he's going to work out in terms of a, a, a talent level, skill level. If he doesn't work out, it's going to be because of an off-the-field issue. And if he has another off-the-field issue, we're going to look back on him like, that was stupid. Stupid of me, stupid of the Titans, but, you know, I take that chance there. So those are 10 guys, uh, that I, 10 picks that I think are being slept on a little bit, need a little bit more hype because they're going to be a more of an impact either right away or long-term or both, like the Fitz, 
Uh, all of the above is what created this list. Talked about it on Twitter a little bit. Tweaked the list a little bit. Had some more guys on on that on Twitter. So be a good reason to follow us on Twitter. Always talk with you guys there. Uh, check out our other videos. We have undrafted free agency videos. We have we have winners losers grades videos for the NFL draft. Check it out. Check out our sponsors. GLD Shop Liquid IV code GOAT for a percentage off. It's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.